Hello, good afternoon. My name is William Dennis. Uh, this is my presentation for FIN 4303. It's actually my uh, pre-presentation to be approved. I am presenting with a group. However, we're all doing it individually to be pre-approved for the um, project. I'm going to be using my cell phone as my PowerPoint reference as I do not have a projector. Um, my portion of the project is paying yourself first. That is my module. And it's it entails learning how to save, different ways to save, uh, why you would want to save, and why it's important to save for your future, uh, such as retirement, investments, etc. So paying yourself first, I'm going to first start off with the reasons to save. And obviously the key to paying yourself first is to create a discipline, uh, learning how to save a certain percentage of every single paycheck or every single gift or inheritance. Uh, for example, something like a tax refund, learning how to save a certain percentage of that or almost all of it. Um, the, the key concept here is, is in the name, which is paying yourself first, meaning that before you pay any bills, before you do anything with your money, you are going to literally pay yourself first in the concept of you are your own employee, if you will. So that creates a certain discipline and allows you to master the art of really forcing yourself to save because many of us know that it's, it's one thing to say that you're going to save money. But once the bills start coming in and your expenses and you go out and this and that, what have you, um, the money starts to diminish very fast. And then you really don't want to save because you want to keep whatever little bit is left or you already blew through it. So <clears throat> obviously you want to save uh, for various reasons. One of the key reasons is to save for your goals, a specific goal, meaning in the sense that. I would like a new car at the end of the year, so I need to save five thousand for a down payment. So you know you're you're gonna do the math for that. So somewhere around four hundred dollars and change every single month is what you need to save in order to have that five thousand dollars at the end of the year. And the goal can be you know retirement just as easy. So you you want to say hey I want to retire at age fifty two as opposed to age sixty five. Let's say for example. So you create a, a calculator. There's many tools that you can use online to go ahead and, and just calculate out how much of each paycheck or how much of uh, whatever salary you have yearly is needed so that you can hit that mark and you can hit that goal or maybe even be a little bit ahead and not fall behind. Obviously we know that your standard of living is very important so you also want to create a better standard of living for yourself. So if, if you are saving and if you have more money in the bank, literally, you're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to be able to maybe afford that nice watch that is uh, a status symbol for yourself. So your standard of living is going to go up or maybe because you save more, you can put more towards a down payment of a home and now you can move into a nicer neighborhood. Ergo, your standard of living has increased as well. Uh, lastly and most importantly, in my opinion, is the fact of saving for a rainy day. So emergencies do arise. Um, they never fail in life. I'm only 25 and I've learned that at a very young age. Um, you need to have a cushion, uh, what they call in, in finance, a, a safety net for a rainy day. If you, God forbid, are, are fired, laid off, what have you, you need to have at least as a rule of thumb, six months of income saved. So that in that six month window, the idea is that you can get back on your feet, you can get an equal job or close to it or better, or you can just figure out life plans. If you have children, I do not, but if you have children, you know, you need to be able to provide six months of life without having to crash like a roller coaster, you know? So, um, learning to attain certain goals through saving, um, you're going to want to like I said, save your money first before anything. So if you make $3,000 a month, you're going to have to create a percentage. That's, that's my best advice. So you say, listen, I, I'm, from now on, I'm going to save 30% of what I make, you know, aside from what retirement fund 401k, which we'll get into that in a few minutes here. Um, and that's what you're going to do. So you take the 30% out of the 3000, that's $900. 
every month and you know that that's going straight into savings. So, you know, each year in theory, you should have a little bit over $10,000 to put towards a goal, uh, whatever that may be, like we just spoke about a home, et cetera, an investment. So <clears throat> you're going to want to do something very simple. Um, you can actually set up a direct deposit. I'm sure many of you know, you can set up a direct deposit as in your paycheck gets directly deposited into your account. However, you can also set up a direct deposit out of that paycheck coming in that's going to go straight into a savings account. So instead of you physically having to go there, you won't even miss the money for, for a lack of a better term. So it's done automatically for the sheer reason that you won't even notice that it wasn't there. So if you're making 3000 but you have an automatic deposit that's going to split $900 out of that right when your direct deposit hits, then you're going to be expecting 2100 not 3000 and then feel bad about taking $900 away from it. So that's a great little trick for your mind to kind of get into the habit of saving and not have to, you know, have it be so daunting. Obviously you want to shop around for your best financial services, you know, whether it's insurances or investment services, what kind of fees are you getting paid? What if your bank accounts, are you having a monthly fee? Uh, what kind of interest is it paying, which we're going to get into in a minute. Etc. So you definitely want to shop around and you want to see what's what's best for you to um, be able to save as much as possible. Um, lastly, is cutting down unnecessary expenses. So if you know that you have a goal or if you know that that you need to you know save money next year because you don't want to pay rent anymore, you you want to move out and actually own something, then obviously you need to cut out unnecessary expenses. What do I mean by unnecessary expenses? If you like to go out on average three to four nights a week, let's say to dinner or to get a, a drink or something of that sense, um, then you need to cut that down to one to two times because every single week that's going to save you, let's say an average of $100, that $100 you add it up, multiply it by four, you have $400 at the end of each month that now you have extra. So, and let's be honest, those are unnecessary expenses because that's not a necessity. So, you know, you, you may want to start going grocery shopping more, buying larger quantities. For example, I go to BJ's and I buy everything in bulk because I buy groceries for the next three weeks. Um, and what I save in that, as opposed to going out to dinner or going out to lunch every single day, eating lunch at work, I mean, it's a couple hundred dollars a month, which adds up to a couple thousand dollars at the end of the year. So obviously these are things that'll get you to your goal much faster than what you know the normal avenues would get. Um, these are the mediums that you can use. I'm going to, I'm going to talk very briefly about certain mediums that you can use to save your money. So obviously we have your typical savings account. Some of them do pay interest. The interest is ridiculously low. So we're not really even going to get into that. It's, it's about one tenth of 1%. So don't hold your breath for that. Um, but if you do have the option to select interest, you're always going to want to go with compounding interest. Okay. Compounding interest means that you're getting paid interest on top of the previous period's interest as well. So it, it gets tacked on to the principal balance. It just means that it compounds monthly, semi-monthly, semi-annually, or annually. You know, those are just to name a few. Um, you can also buy bonds. Uh, you know, it, it's very slow growth, but it's pretty much guaranteed growth. Those will pay anywhere between one to three, three and a half percent. Um, these are ways that you can save your money. You do have to lock up your money for a certain amount of time. Most of the time it's about a year. Um, and then you have extended bonds as well. Uh, purchasing certificates of deposit. I myself work at a bank. CDs are great. They do pay a little bit higher than you know what your average account's going to pay. But you know you're really looking into the one percent to one and a half percent ratio. I mean it's not much, but you do have penalties. So you you, you need to make sure that you get a, a, a no penalty CD. So you can pull your money out at any time. You have it highly liquid, and you don't have to wait around. For that year mark, because if you if you break it before the year mark, then you're you're going to get assessed a fee, and you might even have to uh, forfeit certain interests. So more aggressive avenues for you to go ahead and save your money. Um, we're going to talk about U.S. Treasuries, uh, securities, and stocks, and also uh, mutual funds. All right, each one of these categories has a different level of risk, so that's also something that we're going to speak about here, you need to assess what your level, level excuse me, of risk tolerance is. 
So certain people are very risk averse, meaning that they want their money to grow as slow as possible because they don't want to have any risk of losing their money or close to any risk of losing their money. Obviously these people, yes, their probabilities of having their money last is going to be great. However, the reward is going to be so much lower, um, both short, short term and long term, that these avenues are really not going to pay high. You're talking about the low ones to two, maybe three percentage, okay, of interest for you. Uh, you have bonds, you can buy corporate bonds, you can buy government bonds, which are insured by the federal government, probably your safest and probably one of the most safest investments, uh, the most safe investments that there are in the world. Uh, <clears throat> retirement plan. So this is strictly for your retirement plan. Um, there's really three major ways to save for retirement. So you have your IRAs, which is your individual retirement accounts, okay? You have 401ks and 401bs, which is an investment, um, excuse me, a retirement account that's set up by your employer uh, in order to help its employees uh, be able to attain retirement funds by the time that they leave their employment or variable annuities, all right? So we're gonna talk very briefly about these. Um, however, the IRA, let's start with the IRA. The, the reason why people love IRAs is because they're individual first of all, so they're separate from any kind of employment benefits or employment retirement package. Uh, so you have control of your own IRA. Usually that or a broker or financial advisor has control and can kind of guide you. You can adjust your IRA to be placed into certain kinds of investments. So you know if, if you know that energy sectors are doing better, then you're going to go ahead and adjust your IRA for that energy sector. So, or, you know, maybe more industrial, or maybe you wanna diversify more, et cetera. So these IRAs are kind of pooled money that in, is invested into all of these, and it, it yields a return. They're great, and people love them so much because of the tax benefits. Uh, they are tax exempt coming right out. Uh, you do have to pay certain penalties if you withdraw an IRA before a certain age. I believe that the age is 69 and a half. So these are some penalties. The next one that I'm gonna talk about is the 401ks and the 401bs, okay? 401ks are your standard uh, issue employment retirement package. So many, many, many companies, I'd say about 90% of all companies have a 401k plan, all right? Uh, the reason for them is that employers it's called employer matching. So 401ks are great because of that. Like for example, I work at BB&T Bank. BB&T gives a 6% match on my 401k. So I can up to 6%. So in reality, I'm putting in 6% of my income into my 401k, correct? Now BB&T is going to come around and match that with 6%. So in reality, it's 12% of my money is being put into retirement. So it's great. Again, 401ks can be adjusted to the market depending on how you want to, you know, lay out the mutual funds or whatever bonds are being bought into that. So there's different structures for the 401k. You control that as well. Um, your 401b, that's more for uh, public school teachers, all right? That's more of a 401b or certain tax exempt uh, organizations, all right? We're not really going to get into that. Variable annuities, all right? Variable, uh, variable annuities, excuse me, are insurance contracts that your premiums are being invested into something very similar into a mutual fund okay so the strategies for choosing your investments it's, it's equally important um <clears throat> the number one strategy that i think anyone should use is diversification so if you have let's say ten thousand dollars and and this is your start to your retirement investment. You don't want to put all that $10,000 into one basket, do you? You know, you ever heard the expression, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's exactly what that is. So you want to put 2,000 into mutual funds, 2,000 into bonds, 2,000 into to, to a CD, let's say, for example, and kind of split the risk because the more that you diverse yourself, the, the higher the chances are that when a bad economic time happens, like in 2008, for example, you're able to minimize the loss of what's gonna happen. That's very important because a lot of people in 2008, for example, 
when the crisis struck, they had a lot, a lot, a lot of their resources and their retirement resources all put, put into one sector. This obviously was a big problem because if that sector went down, which it did, uh, almost all their investment was gone. Um, they had to wait years for it to recover. So consider how long you're planning for this investment. So if you say, hey, I want this money to be available to me by one year, okay, then you need to look for investment avenues that are not going to incur any penalties after the one year mark. So, you know, anything before the one year, if, if there are going to be penalties, you know, that's something that you really don't want to be in. Um, if it's something more long term, like you say, hey, uh, I'm going to buy a property and I'm going to put down 50000 but, you know, I'm not concerned about that money for the next five years, then that's great because you're going to see that asset grow. Hopefully it will. You'll get to double your money or maybe close to it and then you'll be able to pull out that equity and go on about your business. Um, <clears throat> do not invest in anything that you don't fully understand. You don't need to be a finance guru. I'm a finance major per se. There's a lot of things that I don't even understand, but it is nice to at least have a very good understanding of what's happening. Like I've spoken about the fees and the penalties and you need to know these things before you get involved because the last thing you want is to get involved with something and, and a broker sells you on something and all of a sudden an emergency comes up or you need your money in a year or two years and it's locked in and it's not liquid. That, that's a very bad situation because you're going to end up paying 10, 20, 30% penalties just to withdraw your own money. So the fine print is very, very important. Um, consistently invest in the same fashion. Um, by that I mean in the sense that if when the markets are low, you invest 10%, keep investing that 10%. When the markets are high, if you only invest 5%, keep investing that 5% because at least when the markets fluctuate up and down, which they always do, there's always peaks and troughs, you're going to lose and you're going to gain almost about the same. So you're going to be able to see, you know, throughout the many, many, many years that you're going to be doing this, you're going to be able to see, okay, well, I know what I can anticipate to lose. I also know what I can anticipate to win. So you can base your financial future on that. Um, meet with a financial advisor at your financial institution. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very important. It's very simple nowadays, especially when you have companies like Bank of America by Merrill Lynch and, you know, Wells Fargo has their own investment for, um, investment services department. You know, all these companies now, now you have an FSA, a financial certified advisor, um, right at your branch. So you can just walk in, you can make an appointment, you can meet with that individual. He or she will and is licensed in that field. So they, they will explain to you all your avenues and, and, you know, help you come to the best decision because that is your financial institution anyway. So you're going to do your the majority of your banking with them anyway. So actions to follow with your money. Um this is my finishing uh, point. Define and set a goal. Okay, so in conclusion, you definitely want to define and set a specific goal, whether those goals are, you know, six months to five, ten years. These are very important goals. The, the more long-term goals that I'm talking about here are obviously buying a property, um, an investment. That, that is a long-term future investment. Mortgages come in the sense of 30 years. So, yeah, that's a, that's a huge decision. So those are more long-term goals, more short-term goals. I want to move out of my neighborhood. I want to live in a nicer apartment. Um, I want to have a nicer car. Those are more short-term goals. I, I want to buy a new phone. I, I, I want to buy, or I want to travel uh, across Europe. You know, those are, those are more short-term goals. I want to be able to pay off my student loans, et cetera. So, you, you know, you can do that in the short-term once you start making money. Um, make the most of your paychecks before retirement. Um, like I said, you know, getting, if, if you're close to retirement or, or if, you know, those last few five years are coming up, try to get as much overtime as possible. Um, try to get as many promotions as you possibly can sales goals to get bonuses and, and be sure to really be putting that money to work because once you stop working, if that's the plan that you chose, that income is done. So, you know, you, you need to really hoard as much of that as possible towards the end so that it can compound later on in life. For the, for the most of your financial future and success, um, open an IRA. You know, IRAs are great. I spoke about the IRAs, the, the individual deposit, uh, individual uh, retirement accounts, I'm sorry. 
Um, IRAs are great. You can also speak to your financial advisor at any one of your branches at, or banks, and you can open up an IRA, I believe, with as little as $5,000. Um, and these are funds that compound a lot throughout your life. And, and the difference in you investing now in your mid to late 20s as opposed to starting in your mid to late 30s is a huge difference. I mean, I read something on Forbes where the, the statistical average is the individual who invests at, in his 30s, who starts to invest in his 30s, as opposed to the individual who starts to invest in his 20s, the difference when they go to retire at the late age of 50 or early 60s is about a quarter of a million dollars, more or less. So that, that's a huge deal. I mean, that's, that's a home, that's an investment property that you can have and you can rent out and it can be making money for you. And lastly, don't ever, ever, ever touch your retirement savings, ever. Um, it's something that can be so easy to do, but you really have to discipline yourself and you need to know that that money is as if it never existed because that money is going to get you through your late fifties until you die. So that money is your cushion forever after you're done working. Um, I want to thank everyone, um, for watching this presentation and I really appreciate it. Once again, my name is William Dennis. This is for Finn 4303. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the camera now. Thank you so much. Have a great day.